Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to set up system notifications on a Synology NAS. So the good thing about a Synology NAS is that after you set it up, for the most part, everything just kind of works, meaning that as time goes on, you're not really connecting to your NAS as much as you used to, and you're really only connecting to it every now and then, unless you're tinkering and you're you know always in it at that point. But either way, setting up notifications is very important. So this is something that everybody should do. Now, Synology does a great job of monitoring your system. They have a bunch of different checks in place. They can confirm when drives go bad and a slew of other things. But if you're not notified when that happens, how are you going to know that you need to sign into your NAS to actually fix something? So that's where notifications come in, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So real quick, I have written instructions for everything in the description. So Synology gives you three different ways that you can set up notifications. The first is through email. The second is through SMS, which is text message, and the third is through push notification. We're going to be focusing on emails and push notifications in this tutorial because the SMS notifications, from what I could find, they're behind uh, paid applications. So I was trying to find out if there was a free tier, and overall, they're just not very intuitive to use, at least the services that they have. So a little later in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can set up SMS notifications if you're interested, using an alternative that is. But overall, I actually like the push notifications a little better. So that's what we'll be looking at today. That's not to say you can't set up SMS notifications. If you're interested in that, you definitely can. Just know that there might be an expense to that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to log into our NAS, and then we're going to go to the control panel and then notifications. So for now, we're just going to look at email notifications. So the first thing that you need to do is enable email notifications. And then at that point, you have three different options for the service provider. You have Gmail, Outlook, Custom SMP, and there's QQ2, which from what I found is a, uh, a Chinese email service. I won't be going over that today. But you'll need to select the service provider that you'd like to use. So for me, the easiest one was Gmail. And the reason for that is because as soon as you select Gmail, and you click that login to Gmail button, what it does is it pops up your account, you can select your account, you can allow trust on the Synology DSM notifications, and then when you select agree, you are fully signed in at this point. So you can send the test email notification, and you should get an email at the email address that you specified above. But you can also use Outlook if you'd prefer. The one thing I'll say about Outlook is if you are using multi-factor authentication, you have to ensure that you set up an app password for your uh, Microsoft account. So you're not going to be able to use your password. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to set up an app password for this um, Synology DSM. And what that does is it allows you to authenticate without needing two-factor authentication. So that is only if you are using multi-factor authentication. If you're not, you would just put your password in there. But if you are not using multi-factor authentication, side note, you really should. Once you do that, you can send the test email and you should get the uh, email notification at the recipient's email address that you specified above. The last part that we're not going to be going over is the custom SMTP server. So this allows you to use practically any email provider that you'd like. Uh, what you need to do is you need to go in and get the SMTP server information, the port information, and then you have to authenticate in and you should be able to send emails on behalf of that SMTP server. Uh, at that point, then, the recipient's email address, when you test it, you should receive something there. Like I said, this will work for pretty much any email provider that exists, uh, as long as you have the SMTP information. But it's a little more complex to set up rather than Gmail and Outlook because those are automatically built in. So that's the email address setup. If you want to set up push notifications, what you need to do is you need to download the DS Finder application on your phone uh, using either the Google Play Store or Apple's App Store. And when you download that application, what you need to do is you need to manage your existing NAS. Now, as soon as you go ahead and you do that, you should be able to find your NAS in the list. And after that, what you'll have to do is you'll have to put in the IP address or host name and port. Don't forget the port, otherwise you won't be able to connect in. As soon as you do that, enter in your username and password, check off HTTPS if you're using the HTTPS port, and then you should automatically log in at that point. Now, the very important point here is that you need to enable notifications. If you don't enable notifications, you won't be able to move on to this next step where we are actually accessing this in DSM. So as soon as you set up your mobile device, what you can do is you can go back to Synology's DSM, 
you can go to the notification section and then push service and you have to enable mobile device notifications. At that point, if you select manage paired devices, you should see your cell phone listed in that, uh, in that list. At that point, assuming it's there, you can send the test message and you should get a pop-up on your phone. Now I tested this uh, on my network and off my network so I can confirm that you do not need to be on your local network to receive those push notifications. You can be anywhere in the world. And that's why I prefer using this method as opposed to SMS. So now that we configured our device to send notifications, what we need to do is we need to go into the advanced section and we need to actually specify what alerts we want. Now, if you're using something like push notifications, you're probably gonna wanna limit this to critical events only. And to a certain extent, you kinda wanna limit these to critical events period because what you don't want is you don't want these emails to turn into white noise. What ends up happening a lot is when you're getting hammered with emails, you really just tune it out. And even if it's important, you kind of just tune it out to a certain extent. So by specifying that only important emails and alerts are sent to you, anytime your NAS sends you a notification, you know that something's wrong. So for that, you could be uh, looking at something like the drive failures or maybe a backup that you need to run every night doesn't run, but these are really gonna be user specific. So you're gonna have to go through each of these, unfortunately, determine when you want email notifications, determine when you want push notifications, and set these settings up to be exactly what you want. So if you made it this far, like I said a little earlier, I'm not gonna go over SMS notifications. And um, if you really wanted to, you can set up the SMS notifications. It's very simple. You just have to use a provider, um, unfortunately, and in a lot of cases, pay for it. So a little trick that you can do, assuming that you do want SMS notifications, but you don't want to pay for them. One thing that you can do is a lot of cell phone providers allow you to email your cell phone number and then you will receive that email as a text message. So you'll have to look it up because every cell phone provider is different and you'll be sending it to a different at address depending on your cell phone provider. But what you can do is you can specify your uh, cell phone number and then at the domain that your cell phone provider uses for email to text and you can add that email address back to that email section and as soon as you do that if you send a test notification you should receive a text message the important thing that I want to note here is that you might want to get uh, you know a ton of different emails that you don't want text messages for as well so if you specified a ton of different um, you know, email notifications that you want. If you add that SMS address into that section, you're going to get hammered with text messages. So you might not want to do that, uh, but that is an option. If you're not really using this for anything other than critical events, if you want to get a text message, that is something that you can do. So like I said earlier, the monitoring on your NAS is great, but if you don't have a way to be notified when something goes wrong, the monitoring really does nothing. So this is something that's actually very important to set up that I'm sure a lot of people haven't set up, but hopefully these instructions have helped. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks guys.